Hi, my name is Mike Cousins, and I paint miniatures. Scale models of heroes and monsters generally no more than a few inches tall. I'm best known for painting them using comic book influences and trying to make three-dimensional figures look like illustrations. I'm going to start with this and turn it into this. This miniature of Darth Vader is from the Fear and Dead Men box for Star Wars Shatterpoint and is about two inches tall. I browsed Darth Vader comics for inspiration and found a few images that I felt really suited this miniature. I really like this panel because it makes the different textures of Darth Vader's outfit feel distinct while still appearing black. Vader is a little more monotone in this image, but I like how the red lenses break up the black of the helmet. On something as small as a tabletop miniature, the eyes won't stand out at all if they're the same color as the surrounding helmet. To get started, I'm priming Vader all over with black Stylo Res Primer. I'm paying particular attention to the underside of his capes, which are easy to miss. Next, I'm using white Stylo Res Primer from above. This helps me read the details of the miniature better, especially the way the cape folds and flows. I'm also focusing white primer on the lightsaber blade so I don't have to work as hard to make it nice and vibrant. With the priming done, it's time to start painting. Now before I dive into painting, I want to take one more look at my references. In many images, Vader is shown with either white or silver armor around his shoulders. I like this because it brings to mind his appearance in Rebels and also helps break up the large amount of black. The clothing on his arms and legs looks like a softer, more diffuse material without harsh highlights or shadows. However, his boots, helmet, and even his cape are much glossier, with very sharp highlights and deep shadows. Even though these different textures live in the same monochrome palette, they use those tones very differently. First, I'm painting the armor around Vader's shoulders, beginning with a base coat of P3 Iron Hull Grey. Sadly, my camera was out of focus for most of this step, but thankfully, it's just a simple base coat. I also picked out the gadgets on Vader's belt at the same time. Next, I lighten the gray by mixing in some P3 Underbelly Blue. I love this color. It's a slightly cool off-white that ends up in a lot of my monochrome work. I mix this about half and half with the Iron Hull Gray and I'm focusing this brighter color towards the bottom of the armor, leaving a bit of a shadow underneath the cloak and helmet. Then I brightened the armor further using straight Underbelly Blue. Lastly, I use P3 Moro White to really define the edges of the armor I also added some small highlights to the gadgets on Vader's chest and belt. Vader's lightsaber hilt also gets some bright highlights at this time. I used P3 Asheth Grey as the base for Vader's clothing, his arms, legs, and the sides of his torso. This is a slightly warm off black that leaves a little room for deep shadows. For the base coat on almost everything else, I used Pro Acryl Coal Black. This is a very matte true black with decent coverage. I used this color for Vader's cloaks, helmet, boots, and gloves. Also, don't forget to paint the chest armor and Vader's codpiece. Before I do much else, I'm going to base coat the lenses of Vader's helmet with a dark red, in this case, P3 Amethyst Rose. Even though I'm not ready to highlight the lenses yet, I'm doing the base coat on them early because I'm working on the black of the helmet and I don't want to risk accidentally getting red paint on a black detail later that is otherwise already done. But now that I have the red on my palette, I'm going to go ahead and put a base coat on the lightsaber blade because it just makes sense. Now that the lenses are base coated red, I'm going to continue painting the rest of Vader's helmet black, being careful not to paint over the lenses, but instead trying to frame them in. The white armor around Vader's shoulders has some raised detail that's actually painted black, and so I'm going to go ahead and pick that out now as well. Because these black details are raised up off of the armor, you want to make sure you paint the sides of them as well. They're very small, it's a little bit tricky, but it's worth the effort. Next, I'm going to use P3 Iron Hull Grey to highlight Vader's legs and upper arms. This is the mid-tone grey I used as the base for the white on his shoulder armor earlier. The change in value between Iron Hull Grey and Asheth Grey is pretty steep. I'm going to mix a 50-50 blend of these two colors later and use it to make a nicer transition. So here I'm using a 50-50 mix of Iron Hull Grey and Asheth Grey with just a little bit of water in it and I'm using that to just blend those two colors together and it's working really well. 
Now I'm continuing to use P3 Iron Hull Gray, this time to add highlights to the helmet and faceplate. Vader's faceplate has a lot of small details with sharp edges, and you really just need to highlight those edges to make them easy to read. Approaching the top of the helmet is more interesting though. I want it to feel glossy and illustrated, reflecting abstract elements and lights. I'm taking a lot of inspiration directly from comic panels here. I'm using highlights along edges and creases to help kind of define the structure of the helmet, and then I'm also creating these sort of abstract shapes representing lights, possible scenic elements that are just being reflected but don't necessarily represent anything in particular. This approach is going to look a little bit messy and weird when you see only the iron hull grey down, but as I add brighter and brighter layers, it's going to start to really come together. There's two basic parts to the helmet. The top is a hemisphere, and it's going to basically reflect light as round points, while the brim around the bottom of the helmet is much more flat and would tend to reflect light as linear streaks instead, and I take that into consideration when I'm creating these brighter points. In both cases, I'm keeping those reflections a little bit light and sketchy. Even the round reflections are getting jagged, uneven edges so that they don't define anything in particular. Before I move on to a lighter highlight, I'm using a little bit of the Iron Hill Gray just to add highlights to the black stripes across the shoulder armor. And now I'm back to adding highlights to the other side of the helmet. Now I'm going to highlight the helmet further by mixing some Mora White into the Iron Hill Gray and creating a much lighter gray. So here I'm using the highlights I already created in Iron Hull Gray as a roadmap, and where they're big enough, where there's enough volume, I'm putting a brighter point kind of inside the existing highlight. Some of the thinner, more linear highlights I created, I'm going to leave alone, not add a brighter point to them. That way we're getting a little bit of variety in how bright each highlight is, which gives a little more depth to the imaginary surroundings around Darth Vader. I'm also using this brighter highlight color to more sharply define some parts of Vader's faceplate. And of course, a few more highlights on the black stripes across the shoulders and across the top of the chest. And as before, we're back to the other side of the helmet. Now I'm going to take some P3 Mora White and jump straight up to white highlights. Now when you're adding these white highlights to a black surface, you want to keep them really, really limited. You want it no more than like 5-10% to of the surface area. The idea is that, especially with a glossy black surface, the white reflections are very sharp and crisp. And you don't want too much of it or else the whole surface starts to feel grey instead of black. For a great example of this, just look at any picture of a shiny black car on a showroom floor. It's going to be about 60% black, 30% grey, and then no more than 10% white. Alright, that helmet's looking nice and glossy, and it's time to start working on some other details. I'm going to highlight the eye lenses and lightsaber next using P3 Kato Red Base. This is my all-time favorite red paint. It's super saturated, it thins really nicely, you can make glazes out of it. It's just a wonderful product. Now I'm brightening up the entire saber blade, but with the eyes I want some of the darker red showing, so I'm creating a bright point kind of towards the top of the eye, and then underlining the bottom to give it a bit of a gem effect. Next I've mixed some P3 Mora White in with my Kato Red base to create a bright pink, and I'll be using that as very sharp highlights on the eyes, and to start to make the lightsaber appear more glowy.
With the lightsaber blade, I'm bringing the brightest colors down to the hilt where the emitter is. I'm assuming that's where obviously it will be the most energetic and therefore the brightest closest to white. And then tapering out to red along the length of the blade. I'm building the brightness up here by just mixing a little bit more P3 Mora White into the same mix over and over again until it's getting closer and closer to white and keeping each coat a little bit tighter to the emitter. By this point, the paint is almost pure white with just a little bit of red in it. Now I'm back working with Iron Hull Grey, using it to add highlights to the boots and gloves. Now these gloves are actually kind of interesting to highlight because they have ridge details that run parallel to the arm, but then there's also wrinkles that run perpendicular to the arm, and they both need highlights. Darth Vader's fingers wrapped around the hilt of the lightsaber are easy to overlook, make sure they get some highlights too. Now I'm going to add highlights to the boot armor in much the same way I added them to the helmet where they're reflecting nothing in particular. We've got a bit of a concave surface here and his right leg needs a lot less highlighting because it's such a deep step. It's really obscured by his whole stance and so you really only have to worry about highlighting the left boot. With the Iron Hull Grey highlight down, I'm going to the 50-50 mix of Iron Hull and Mora White. And we're going to just do the same thing we did with the helmet, just keep them nice and tight and focused. Now I don't want Vader's boots to become a focal point on the model, so I'm keeping the highlights just a little bit dimmer than they are on the helmet. I'm not coming all the way up to white. I decided after painting the boots to go ahead and go back and add one more round of highlights to the gloves as well. Again, not coming all the way up to white, but coming to that next closest value, that Iron Hall Grey Moro White mix. Now it's time to paint Vader's big dramatic cape. It's already got a nice base coat of Pro Krill Coal Black, and I'm going to build on that with some P3 Asheth Grey. I want the cape to look really glossy, and part of that is because I just think it looks good. Another part of that is the really deep shadows and really bright highlights will kind of create a sense of motion and make it feel a little more fluttery. If there's one thing that Anakin Skywalker is, it's dramatic, and we want this cape to look dramatic. I've thinned the Asheth Grey down just a little bit with some water so that it blends a little bit nicer, it gives me a little bit of a softer edge. You can also see here, I'm still trying to hold to that 60-30-10 rule, where this gray is about 30% of the surface area and most of it is still black. Now moving on to Iron Hull Gray, it's time to highlight the highlights and make them a little bit brighter, make them more extreme, and we're just going to keep continuing this process. It's worth noting that even though there's a lot of different textures and kind of different ways of representing black in this model, I'm really just coming back to the same three to four paints over and over and just using them in different ways. Where the cape billows across the shoulders, it's basically horizontal, so I'm creating a bit of a bigger, broader highlight there. Now, don't forget that because Vader's super extra, he's wearing two capes, it's really easy to forget to highlight the bottom one it really just needs an edge highlight. The rest of it, from every tabletop angle, is completely hidden by the other cape. Another color I'm going to reuse is P3 Underbelly Blue. This was the second last highlight on the shoulder armor, and I'm going to use it as the second last highlight on the cape as well. I'm using this highlight on the most billowy part of the cape to really help exaggerate it and give it more of a sense of motion. A few sharp refined highlights across the bottom edge of the cape will also help it feel like it's a little more fluttery there as well. And I'm going to do this one more time with P3 Mora White, really just pushing the last little bit of these highlights up.
Now I'm going to use some Cater Red Base to add some really dirty comic book inspired object source lighting. This is going to be a few simple points of red, mostly on the gloves and a little bit on the helmet, just to give the impression of a little bit of cast light from the lightsaber blade. Now it can be really tempting to do a strong overpowered object source light from a lightsaber blade, but I also like to think of these miniatures as generally being in pretty well lit conditions. They're fighting outside and it's noon on an overcast day, so we've got a lot of non-directional light happening, but it's still pretty bright. And under those conditions, a light source like a lightsaber, a flashlight, a laser, whatever, doesn't cast a whole lot of ambient light. You know, if these guys were fighting, you know, in a city at nighttime or in a cave or something, you have a very different lighting atmosphere than you do with a well-lit miniature in an outdoor battlefield. And that's often how these games take place, at least in my mind's eye. So here I've just added a little bit of red to the highlights I've already painted onto the gloves, a little bit to the helmet, and only the parts that are most close to the lightsaber blade. Okay, so first of all, I cheated and painted the base off camera. I figure people have different basing preferences and it's not really part of the miniature. But that said, it's time for my favorite part of comic style painting, the black lining process. And it's a little bit redundant on Darth Vader because he's already basically black head to toe. As I often do, I'm using Higgins Black Magic, which is a really nice deep matte black ink for my lining work. I just find it flows really nicely off the brush. It's also a little bit darker than both the Asheth Gray I used for a lot of the clothing and a little bit darker than the Pro Acryl Coal Black I used for the bigger areas like the cloak and the helmet. This is important because it means that even when I've got something that's black, I can still add a black line to it for a little bit more emphasis. So as you can see, the first thing I'm doing is using black lines to create more definition to the different shapes of the boot, kind of silhouetting that armor plate, that little line across the front of it, the heel from the boot, etc. I'm going to add a similar line along the ridge of the helmet, but there's not a lot to do with the helmet. I do, however, want to add a black deep area on the inside of the helmet just to pronounce that shadow a little bit further. I'm also using some thin black lines just to break up the different little details on his belt. There's a few gadgets there and it helps them stand apart from each other by just adding that little black line between them. There's a few deeper folds in Vader's clothing, specifically around his elbows, and I'm using a deep black line in those creases just to make them look a little more darker, a little more illustrated. And I'm going to do the same thing with Vader's knees. There's some deeper creases in the fabric there that kind of pull forward, and I'm using black lines to, again, make them look more illustrated, more hand-drawn. As a finishing touch, I'm putting a couple small lines on the lightsaber hilt just to break up the different details there, and we're done. And with that, comic-style Darth Vader is done and ready to hit the table. I've actually managed to play one game with him so far, and he was an absolute beast, just blendered the heck out of some Ewoks. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and if you do follow along with it, I'd love to see the results. You can tag me on Instagram, Facebook, show up on my Twitch streams, or even just comment here. Thanks for watching, and until next time, do something epic.